Welcome to the Between Two Wheels podcast, where we talk about all things on and between two wheels. I'm your host, Johnny Roblox, and you all know my co-host, Justin Shenzhong Bird, and Uncle Zhu Shao Ken. God damn. <laughs> did, you, did you hear that nice scrape in the bottom of the barrel, too? <laughs> yeah. What? That's some funny shit. <laughs> Um, for for the non Mandarin speaking people, Justin is called Ginger and Ken's called Giant Beast. This episode is being brought to you by Get Lowered Cycles, your source for all the parts your Harley and now Indian need. Today we are talking about Harley's 2020 mid year release. What's going on, guys? That mid year release should be in quotes. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> Air quotes. Yeah. And it shouldn't be called a release. It should be called disappointment. Anyways, how you guys going? Doing? Go, going? 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 Doing? God, I'm, I'm doing. fucking tired, y'all. Well, yeah. that's a dangerous way to fuck. Yeah. That's how people wait, suffocate. Wait, who's tired? Is she hot? Is he hot? Yes. Are they uh, hot? Yeah. <laughs> Non-binary folks. Come on. <laughs> oh, what's going on? Nothing. You're hydrating. Are you? I'm still hydrating, yeah. I ate like shit this week, so I'm trying to mm. not die this weekend. Yeah. But you're not uh, racing this weekend, right? I'm training. Training. So, okay. yeah. The uh, the weekend before the race, I try to go out and ride pretty pretty aggressively. Yeah. Yeah. To try to get as much, you know, practice in as possible. Now, are you riding at the same location? That No. Oh. Unfortunately, not. Um they didn't have any sort of thing posted, so we'll just wow. be going out to Zars. But it'll be uh, uh, Brad and Hasso and Miss Bird are going out there too. So they're going to kind of go do their own little putting around when me and Skylar go and ride other ways. Okay, <laughs> rip it up. <laughs> How you doing, Ken? I'm doing all right. Nothing, nothing really going on. I'm getting back on my diet, so. That's good. Must you want back on your diet right before your cruise? Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, don't. That's some more shit. No, no, I need to. Yeah, yeah, my stomach's all fucked up from it. So, <laughs> so you have to get your stomach right, so then you can so I can get really it all fucked, fucked up, up yeah. on yeah. the cruise. That makes that, sense, and that way I can get coronavirus on top of it all. Oh, Dude, hey. if you get that, get some food poisoning going on on top of that, right? Oof. I mean, you will die, a lose thin man. Yes, <laughs> coming back looking like Brad, a fucking plant. <laughs> Pale and skinny. <laughs> like a Holocaust victim? Yeah. Oh, God. What, too soon? Come maybe on. maybe a little bit more fed than that. <laughs> I mean, you know, I did get the drink package, so. Oh, fuck. Liquid diet. That's what Liquid. he's going to be on. <laughs> yep. The fact that it's 24-7, all you can eat, pretty much whatever you want to eat. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's mm. heaven. I think we get like 15 drinks a day or something like that per person. That's a good amount. And... And then, and of course, we both have it. So my, my wife doesn't drink that much. <laughs> yeah. So you're going to get really so, fucked up. So if I want to get really, really fucked up, I can. So you're going to have about 27 drinks a day. <laughs> Something like that. I mean, if, you know, if you think about it, it's, that's not a whole lot. It is. I mean, it, 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 is, it sounds like a lot, and it kind of is, but it's not if you spread it over the whole day. You know, you have a couple of mimosas for breakfast. Okay, so you know, Tracy couple, and I. A couple drinks for lunch and then dinner in the evening. Yeah, so. so Tracy and I, we did the drink package on our cruise. But you don't drink. Back then I did. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> and I was only able to hit my max once. Yeah. Oh, and I mean, it's I goals was, every day. I was trying <laughs> yeah. to hit it that day. But I mean, most of the time I was getting like maybe five drinks. Yeah. I was oh, averaging no. about eight to ten when I was in Jamaica. Oh, goals, man. I'm, yeah. But I'm, we didn't have a limit, so I didn't have a, I didn't have a goal. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> So it'll be good. I checked the weather today for Belize and Cozumel and Mahogany that's, that's Bay. That's where uh, Sandoval is. Yeah. Right now. yeah. Yeah, and Belize. Yep. yep. So it's like 85 degrees every day oh, and then man. 80 degrees every night. Damn. <laughs> and then pretty much the gulf is always like 70 yeah. degrees yeah, it's like at night. Pit. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, have you guys been on Harley Davidson's website since the release i saw uh, maxwell's video when he went on it but i have not personally been on it now so i will say the suck factor of harley davidson's website has decreased by like five percent oh wow that's drastic it is moving on up. yeah so something else that i found during my you know scouring of their website was they have completely changed how they are describing their bikes 
you know, before you'd go click motorcycles, then it'd say Sportster, Softail, yep. touring, touring, CVO. CVO. Now they have it set up into categories. So they have the street category, okay. which is now all the Sportsters and the street 750. I also noticed that, and I don't know if this happened during the release, they just cut it, or if this happened at the 2020 model year release, mm -hmm. no more street 500. Hmm. Only a 750 now. Uh, I they, mean, that makes sense, really. Yeah. Yeah. The, the 570, those are so close together as far as, you know, the engine and... I'm pretty they're, sure they're, they're really like, close price-wise, too, if yeah. I remember correctly. And maybe like a thousand, yeah. fifteen hundred dollar difference. But, uh, but yeah, that's kind of cool seeing that. I was like, okay, so now they're trying to actually copy Indian. I was going to say Indian. Yeah. Like <laughs> <laughs> uh, but they do have the electric category with the live wire. Then the cruiser category. Now, this one confused me at first. I was like, what the fuck's happening? All the soft tails are in there except the Heritage. That makes sense. The Heritage Classic is now considered a touring bike, even though it's still on a soft tail frame. Okay, the so... Yeah. Does, it's, it's, does the Heritage Classic come with the leather bags? Yes. Yes, sealed and lockable bags. And with, it does come with cruise control. And it has the hmm. detachable windshield and the 114 in it. I wonder yeah. if that's why. I don't know. It happens to be the exact same price as the Electric Glide um, standard? standard. Standard. Yeah. I think that makes sense because yeah. I mean, between cruisers and touring, it definitely falls more into the touring category. Yeah. I would think I mean, a tour is better than it cruises. Probably. It's too much bike for cruising. Yeah, I can see that, yeah. Well, you're not doing the right kind of riding then. Well, or you're not doing the right kind of cruising. <laughs> yeah. That's what, I, that's what I told one of your, yeah, your, I saw it. your commenters today. <laughs> you can't be ripping it up on a bagger. Well, then you don't know how to fucking ride, man. <laughs> like Riding's a lot cooler when your bike is shooting sparks. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> and then they, they the touring families, all the touring bikes... And then they have trikes. Now, they took the CVOs and actually just dumped all of them into the touring family, except for the trike, and then that one's in the trike family. So at least it's easier to that makes sense. see everything. Yeah. I mean, it kind of makes sense, but at the same time, I don't know. I felt like the CVO was always kind of its – it really is kind of its own category. I mean, it's a whole different level when you're buying a bike. Yeah, but if they're going to do that, they need to call the CVO category what it is for ballers only. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> For I mean, I, I never crisis, saw it. White dudes. Yeah, I never saw it as a separate category. Like, especially like to the uninformed. Like, yeah. if you walk in dealership, they're really not going to be able to tell the difference between. A, oh, if you a were special. to just if you were to just look at them, yeah. Unless you so knew the paint similar. schemes, yeah, you you wouldn't know. Yeah, you'd be like, oh, that one has cool paint. Yeah, that's yeah. At first glance, that's all you're going to see. So no, I think that makes sense. Yeah. So I I kind of I kind of like seeing how they updated their website a little bit. The fact that they're now copying Indian. You know, <laughs> here's the thing. I mean, if it it's works. A, it's about fucking time. Indian has been copying Harley Davidson for all these fucking years. It's good to get one over on Indian. Yeah. <laughs> slightly improved website. 5% is 5%. Um, but so I hope everyone has had a chance to go check out John Maxwell's video for the 2020 mid-year quotes <laughs> um, mid-year release but if you haven't go check it out uh, he hits on the same three items we're about to talk about and that's the bike updates 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 so they released tuesday i think is that when mm, yeah sure yeah sure Anyways, early this week yeah the 30th anniversary fat boy now, Ken, you actually pointed this out, so I went ahead and snatched <laughs> the picture. They they look so similar because I, I was looking at it. And I was Bro. like, I've seen. I was like, before. I've seen this fucking yeah. thing before. Like, this doesn't look unique. Yeah. So it's pretty much the exact as the 2016 Fatboy S. Yeah. Um, so the S had all blacked out parts and it had the upgraded motor i think it had the 103 in it or whatever the final 107 107, 107 yeah no no That's 105 right. 109 no. what it would have been a five <laughs> one had the 103 107 110, 110. yeah they had, there we go it had the 110 in it god damn but but trust us guys we know what we're talking we know about exactly <laughs> what we're 
<laughs> we are highly untrained, unprofessional motherfuckers. Yeah. <laughs> right here at Between Two Wheels Podcast. <laughs> but uh, I will say this: the paint scheme looks good. The whole thing with the wheels, oh, I just man, it kills me. I hate the wheels. Done. Well, for one, I hate I hate the I, Fat Boy wheels. I, I hate the dish the wheels. wheels. No, I love the solid rim. Uh, yeah, I, I do love that. But you have all of it black except for that one the little giant fucking, fucking green. stripe, dude. Your little lip. Yeah. Okay. Now you brought this up in our little OG chat. Just paint that. You know, just, just powder coat the same way you powder coat the engine pieces. Yeah. Oh, oh the the bronze. Yeah. That have been slick. Take that color and put it around the wheels. That have been slick. Yeah. Just, I mean, just how on the the 2013, Six. it's got or 16, it's got the chrome and the chrome. It makes sense on that. But then yeah. you do bronze, bronze, and then leave that. Yeah, because the engine is bronze, Fuck the air off, cleaner has dude. bronze, the tank emblem has bronze, right? And then you have, you know, the chrome lip around your wheels. Oh, God. Now I'm sure it was a big cost savings, but man, I I'd be okay paying five hundred dollars extra. If that was matched, matched or just all black or all black, yeah. I mean, even all bla- even all black, then they wouldn't have to do any tape off there. Yeah, true. I do like seeing over the four years from the 2016 to the 2020. Look at the rear fender; it takes out that old geezer looking rear fender with the little bobtail piece and the, I like that one better I'll, yeah I like the older style better I like that fender the older fender better but the newer headlight and uh, front fender yeah yeah I, I just I never like that fender it's like if they if they would have extended that fender all the way down and not put that little oh, the little flare the little yeah. dovetail on there I, I would have liked that more I just Look, I understand people are all about nostalgia and bullshit and that's, well, that's fine the, that's what the heritage is for yeah. Well, yeah, the Heritage Classic. Yeah. <laughs> but I don't know. The Fat Boy is supposed to be the big, innovative motorcycle for Harley. And, you know, now. It's, but, it, but it's not. No. Yeah. <laughs> so, but to y'all's point, I definitely love the new headlight on there. I think yes. it looks yep. so much better. Look, Yeah, it looks a whole lot better. Is that the same headlight as the uh, um, uh, Road King? No, no. No. So that's. That's more similar to the Fat Bob 114 or the Fat Bob no. headlight. It's not the rectangular. No, no, it's around. It's, it's just a round headlight. Oh, is it? Oh, just the just the, the seven shroud. inch, yeah, the seven okay. inch headlight with the shroud. Yeah. Okay. The, for some reason, it looked like the shroud. The shroud makes it look like it's a rectangle. From this from this angle that we're looking at, yeah. But no, it's 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 circular. I would say it's closer to the breakout than it is to the Fat Bob, but mm. still mm-hmm. not not breakout ish. <laughs> So moving on, <laughs> they came out with the Road Glide Special with Eagle Eye Limited Edition paint. Um, now, I didn't to, see, I didn't see that help, either. <laughs> to help Harley Davidson with their naming scheme, the Eagle Eye paint job just doesn't sound right. Call it the Boomer Special. Oh man, that's pretty accurate. It's funny, but I just don't know if I can agree because I just don't think Boomers would go for something that loud. Well, the color they ate least. up the, the graphics fucking, they ate up the fucking blue one with the goddamn eagle across the front of it yeah but that's blue it's not fucking mustard yellow no that is <laughs> two day old urine yellow oh god <laughs> is that a you hum- should get that hum- checked hum- is that humvee piss bottle yellow yeah <laughs> actually <laughs> pretty close you, you, yeah. you know exactly what i'm yeah. talking about <laughs> yeah um now john made a observation about the harley davidson uh, name plate being on the top of the saddlebag, and I will agree. I think it looks fucking horrible up there. Yep. Is it? Oh, is that a the actual like? That's there's not a decal. No, that's paint. That's part of the paint package. Okay, it's like a two thousand dollar upgrade. <gasps> yeah. Fuck me. But it's numbered. Yeah. No, I thought they weren't numbered. These are. These are numbered. No, I thought they weren't numbered, but they were only making 750 of them, period. But they're not numbered. No, these are numbered. The 30th anniversary Fat Boy is not. And all of the five-year anniversaries are not numbered. That's why they don't have special resale value on those. Hmm. But this one is going to be yeah. numbered. Um, and 
like you know one set, per dealership or something like that. Yeah, one or two, maybe two if you're a big yeah, dealer. If you're a really big dealer, like I'm sure Laid Law will probably get like two. Yeah, you know things like that. Yeah, Cowboys Adam already got theirs in. Yeah, I and should go look at it. that way. I can actually see what it looks like because you know Harley's pictures are yeah. fucking terrible. Yeah. I was yeah, I was just up there yesterday and I didn't <laughs> you didn't see it. I didn't bother to look. Had to go spend all my gift cards. Oh yeah, before they expired. So oh, I didn't know they expired. Well, Cow- <laughs> Cowboys has their own uh own rewards oh, yeah, system yeah, yeah, yeah. now and it expires every month. Yeah. So that's why I got a Yeah, awesome I got like 80 bucks off of my cruise control because of that. I was like, hell yeah. I got an awesome new hat from them. Oh, look at that. Yeah. New gloves. <laughs> Spending all your money. Did, yeah, if it's gonna, <laughs> if it's gonna disappear, I'm gonna spend it. Yeah. Yeah. And then the most important update that they made was they brought back the CVO Road Glide <laughs> in in only one color, though, sand dune. Now, it is a good-looking color. I like it. But they saw how pissed off the world was when they did the uh, no CVO Road Glide for the 2020 model year. Oh, yeah. So they, they had to bring it back. I mean, literally, there's nothing that's been done to this bike <laughs> other no. than this paint job. Yeah. And yeah. The bigger wheel, the shrouds, intake. Well, yeah. I'm saying from last year's. CBO. Yeah, yeah, no, I know. Oh, yeah, I'm, it's the same yeah. list. Yeah. So, I mean, I kind of like the little. I guess it's not. Is it a full chin spoiler that comes up to the sides? I don't know what they call it, but I think everyone knows what you're talking about. Yeah, I kind of, I kind of like that, but at the same time, I kind of don't. It, you, it looks kind of weird. I think it looks good, but it just limits so many things like you can't put lowers on it you can't oh yeah you can't put it doesn't have yeah. a traditional crash bar on it no mm-hmm. it's got the uh, or engine guard whatever mustache bar or not mustache it's the uh chopped yeah but uh so yeah a very hugely you know or to say it like trump huge huge yeah. huge i mean it's highly impressive what they did yeah <laughs> for the mid-year release yeah yeah, super, super duper awesome. Paint. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Fucking nailed that paint again. <laughs> and they had a few thousand of the uh, CVO road glides from last year laying around. So they said, oh, we have this new paint. Yeah. Let's just spray it in this color and call it a brand new and put it mid year. Fuck yeah. And charge $40,000 for it. Nailed it. I feel like they had some of that battleship gray left and just like took a couple dots of white and they're like, <laughs> a little bit of white to it. <laughs> Someone patent this color. What do we call it? 2020. <laughs> <laughs> so if, if, if our listeners don't understand what we're doing here, we're being fucking sarcastic because this is a <laughs> lame mid-year. We could have had the Pan America get dropped. We could have had the Bronx go in. No. We get paint jobs on two road glides and a fucking fat boy. A fat boy. Like, God damn. Yeah. Which looks like the same one from 2016. You know, 2016. Yeah. Nailed it. Well, maybe motorcycle style goes on that four to five year rotation, whereas clothing goes on like a 20 year rotation. Mm. Hmm. So maybe they're just a lot faster than the, the fashion industry. They're trying to be trendsetters. We can call it that. So, so yeah. Yeah. Does that mean the blacked out looks going to come back pretty soon? The solid black? Oh, wait. That's what your bike is. Never yeah. mind. <laughs> black on black. <laughs> black on black on black. <laughs> now, I did go in and start looking at some of the parts that they released. Now, they kind of been sprinkling these parts throughout January and now this. I will say that I'm not upset with the uh, the parts and accessories that they, they came out with. So they have these new handlebars. Now, don't give me shit for bringing up new handlebars, fuckers. I'm not Shocker. buying these. Wow. But Yet. I Yet. do think <laughs> that they look nice. The new fused handlebars. Now, they come in black or chrome, and they have a high height and a low height. So the fused handlebar, which is the higher version, is a 13.3-inch rise, 5.1-inch pullback with... Tip to tip width is 39 inches. Those are some pretty wide bars. 
how wide were, were your window bars? 39. 39. I was going to say, yeah. Shit. Okay. Because I was thinking, I was like, this has to be at least a three foot table here. Yeah. And I'm like, yep, that's out there. Just his favorite handlebars. <laughs> yeah. By the way, Dale, I'm going to be selling a bunch of stuff. So if anyone <laughs> needs bars, I have Stock Road King, Stock Road King Special, times two. And, <laughs> and I have some custom bars. So uh, if you have if you have any desires for bars for touring bikes and soft tails, hit me up in the DM. <laughs> Yeah, because that market for stock handlebars is hot. Surprise. Right now. <laughs> well, some people change out their bars and they go to sell their bike. They want to put the stock bars back on, but they already threw them out. Yep. Yeah, hey, fair enough. Yeah. Anyways, that's the the tall ones, and I, I will say they actually look pretty good. They don't I don't, look bad. I don't hate them. Yeah, I, I don't. I like the this. Yep. That's just it's different. The geometry is very clean up at the the top. Yeah. yeah. Then we move to the low. Now, if you try to do a Google search on this, you have to spell it right, <laughs> which is the wrong way of spelling low. Come on, fuckers. But it's the Fuse Handlebar Low L-O. I mean, they can't spell pack right either on tour pack. No, that's true. It's always P-A-K. Yeah. And soft tail is one word. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, these are the lower ones, obviously, at 10.1 inch rise, six and a half inch pullback, and 35 inch width. It's pretty close to stock, isn't it? Actually, yes. Yeah. yeah. So. They just look different. Yeah. But I, I will say that they they still look nice. I, mean, I yeah. don't hate them. Yeah. I've seen a whole lot worse. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then. Oh, God. The 80 grit line. Now 80 grit. <laughs> that's what they called it. <laughs> and, of course, my autocorrect fixed 80 grit. It's actually one word because, you know. Harley. Because Harley, yeah. But um, they have new floorboards, brake pedal, or brake pedal pad, and passenger pegs. Um, They kind of missed out on a bunch of stuff here, but y'all know the Kiryakin. Riot. uh, The Riot. Riot. It's just like that. Exactly the same. But those are just like Bunkings and. uh, Yeah. Yeah. uh, Flow Motorsports. So Mm -hmm. for $400, you can get either chrome or black floorboards. But they... they, mm. How much are the brake pedals? (laughs) 60... Or is it? Yeah. 65 65 bucks. I mean, that's not terrible. I mean, so, you know, for some of this stuff, I look at it... the same look from the Kiryakin for $25. Oh, but that's Kiryakin. It won't fit on your American bike. Oh, shit, it won't. Brings the value down. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> you know, I, when I look at some of those prices, I, I mean, I kind of get it. You know, machining is expensive. You know, the, all the programming that goes into it. But, like you said, you can go to Kuryaki and get the same, a similar looking one for almost half. And probably not sacrifice any sort of like performance. No. <laughs> no. I mean, I had no problems with any of mine. No. I'm curious how this is going to change once, um, like, aluminum 3D printing becomes affordable. Because I watched a, a video. They're doing it on um, in, in motocross. Uh, they're developing through 3D printing. So, like, if they want to change, like, the chain guard or something like that, they'll 3D print it first and see how it fits. And then they actually do it with metal, too. And what's crazy about 3D printing metal is you can arrange the molecules in different ways to make it stronger and or weaker in certain points. So like if you have like a block of aluminum, like say for example, huh. like a rectangular prism and you want it to bend this way, like up and down, but, but not, not side to side. side to side, they can do that. That's fucking dope. And yes. then once that becomes like affordable in mass manufacturing, because the reason these are so expensive because you have to take a, a block of high grade aluminum that's like, 12 by 12 and you grind all of it away it's called subtractive manufacturing yeah as in the other way you could literally make that part for just that material you know i bet that they have the metal 3d printing already fully scaled in china because they built a thousand bed hospital for the coronavirus people in two weeks yep yeah it was all pre-assembled though 
It was. Like, I mean, the, the hotel downtown in San Antonio, that thing was built in what, two months? Yeah. Because it was all pre assembled off site and they just come and stack them like Legos. Like Legos, yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, it's still impressive that they did. They actually like had the majority of it done in like six days. Yeah. So, I mean, it's still impressive, but. It's also it also feels kind of sketchy at the same time. Yeah, it, it takes two weeks just to get a contractor to call you back in America. <laughs> What's well, like? I mean, I watched one video from Asia. I don't fucking know if it was in China or not. And there was like a fifty by fifty sinkhole in the middle of the fucking road. And in less than twenty four hours or some ridiculously small amount of time. It was filled, and they were driving on it again. Did you see when they turned the train station? It was, like, in one of their big downtown metro. I'm talking, like, a full-size, like, Grand Central Station-type train mm-hmm. station. And it was in the way of something that they wanted to do somewhere else. So they literally just, like, built tracks and picked it up and turned it 90 degrees and set it back down. What the fuck? <laughs> I swear to God, you go look it up. And they also replaced, like, an interstate bridge in 48 hours. Yeah, like, I remember that. It was like a six-lane overpass, and it was they had some sort of issue with it. So instead of like tearing it down there on the spot, they basically like put a truck underneath it, cut it off on both ends, lowered it on the truck, took it out, brought a new one in, installed it, and it was done in two days. <laughs> but you know, when you, when you have a quarter of the population and you go, hey, think of ways to fix this, yeah, or we'll fucking kill you. <laughs> <laughs> so what you're saying is communism I mean, works. In that sense, it does. <laughs> oh, God. Here we Co- go. Communism breeds awesome construction innovation. Yeah. <laughs> uh, moving on to the next line that they came with. And I actually kind of like this one. The The title of it, though, takes me back to my video game um, oh, thoughts. It's, it's the Avengers line. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, the end game line. Now, they have grips foot pegs shift and brake lever i said levers it's the the fucking thing tips what uh, <laughs> yeah. what god i am tired <laughs> uh, the part that connects it to the actual shift linkage and the actual brake pedal goes onto these whatever that's called well that's they that's call your, it a lever it's a brake that's the actual brake lever then you have your brake pad pad yeah which is that part yeah there's versus, versus your brake pads on that go against your rotors. Yeah. But when I think of brake Pe- levers, I pad. think of what's on my handlebars. Your handlebar levers. These are the ones that set your feet. Yeah. So just to clarify. Um, and then they also have pegs. I like these so better than So to last get one. a new lever and a new pad would be $230. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I like these better than the last one. Ooh. The 80 grit. Yeah. So... I'll say that I actually like the look. Now, I don't know what color it is. That's, looks like a gunmetal almost. Yeah, that's yeah. the part I like. Yeah, I and like the fact that. you can do all of your controls or your foot controls and everything in the same color and matching. It's cool, but not for that fucking price. Mm-mm. A set of grips for $130 and they're not heated. Mm-mm. Which, by oh, the way, <laughs> by the way, I have to eat crow here. I talked a whole lot of shit about. A former OG that had that I installed his heated grips on, and they're fucking amazing. Oh yeah, <laughs> they're they're pretty fucking awesome, aren't they? Oh god, so, you don't you don't have heated grips, do you? No, oh, you're missing out. I know it's it's life changing. It re- it really is. <laughs> like I'm not gonna lie, I was looking at some of the other stuff. Like maybe I should get a heated seat. <laughs> like I don't know. Well, when I spoke with Ryan. Erlocker. He has the grips and the seat. And then he only has his vest that he wears that's heated in 30 degree fucking weather in, mm. up there in uh, Yakima. Yeah. That's in Washington State, folks, just in case. Nope. But yeah, I'm like, damn. But again, I like this line, the end game line. I think it looks nice. And. Even though the prices are fucking horrible, I someone in China is going to copy this. Yeah, and so it won't take long. <laughs> uh, Give it I a just, few months. Yeah, but again, at least their design department's coming out with some cool looking stuff. I'll, I'll wait till Kuryak and rip some off. Oh yeah, totally. And then the final line oh. is the streamliner. Wait, that's we already that's been on the bikes. <laughs> Actually, it hasn't. What they added. So, so 
<laughs> I'm gonna say those look exactly. I the swear same. to God, I I just gave those t- to freaking GTZ powder coating so he could fuck around with them. So these are the same ones now. On the we- on Harley's website, they call them. Uh, they match the Street Glide Special. They also match the Road Glide Specials stock, but the Road Glide Special and the Street Glide Special only have the rider floorboards that are like this. Everything yes. else. You, well, is, that's why they did it. They had an aftermarket. Those. Yeah. <laughs> wow. So, but they have heated grips. Hey, heated grips are awesome. Damn, $279. Yeah. How Fuck. awesome are they? I mean, my heated grips are <laughs> fucking awesome. <laughs> <laughs> are they $280 awesome? I don't know. Well, so since it's built into the price of the bike, yes. Oh, yeah. 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 I mean, I paid for them one way or another, but... <laughs> So going along with parts, I just I I'm curious if they I mean I'm sure they have, but I'd like to see me being a, an analyst, I'd like to see the numbers as you know, how much they sell of this really expensive these really expensive parts as opposed to what they could sell if they were just like a distributor of other parts. Like if they if you walked into Harley dealership and you had the entire Kiriakin catalog there in store. Mhm. Like, granted, their profit margin is not going to be as high as the stuff that they're making, but if you can flip more product and essentially be making more money. Yeah. That's how I see it. Yeah. But, I mean, like I said, I'm sure they ran the numbers and I'm not correct or they're just dumb, but I don't know. I've, I see some company or not some companies, some dealerships out in California that kind of dabble in that. Like, they'll have, like, a full legend suspension line. They'll carry the, the fairings and stuff in store. I'm just curious why we don't see that more. I mean, like, the only thing that I've really seen, I did notice just this week when I was there, they do have some Kuriak and stuff. Okay. At Cowboys. And, of course, was a couple years ago, they started carrying the uh, Custom Dynamics. Yeah, they've mm-hmm. carried Custom Dynamics. They carry Rock Form. Yeah, they got the Rock Form. So, I mean, they're just, obviously, they're pushing their own brand. Yeah, but because I mean, I think I only saw like four or five Kuriakin things on the wall. Hmm. But yeah, you're right. You'd think that if they were to be more competitively priced against what I can go online and get. Yeah. But honestly, though, they're actually on some of their stuff, they're actually in line with some of your Joker machine parts. Yeah, but I want to pay more for Joker machine than I do for Harley. Well, because I, they're special and different, and they're not going to be on every yeah, single it's, bike. Yeah, it's like when you were like when Arlen Ness was really hitting it big. Yeah, with the the, the chopper scene. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, you st- I mean, still go look at Arlen Ness, and you're looking yeah. at six hundred dollars for a set of floorboards. Yeah, I just got a clutch cover from them, and it's four. It was four hundred dollars. <laughs> That's ridiculous! Holy but shit! But they're doing something that no one else does. They're doing the see-through parts with that don't suck. Like other people do see-through parts. But they exactly. Suck. If if it's a if it's a part that does something that the other ones aren't doing, or it's a completely custom line, I mean, I can kind of see it. Yeah. But Arlen Ness's quality control is phenomenal. Yes. Well, yeah. The, I mean, and but Arlen Ness is all built here. Yeah. You yeah, know. all of these things are coming from China. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I know people don't like putting Chinese parts on their Harleys. <laughs> I hate to tell you this. <laughs> I hate to tell you this, but the majority of your bike is made from Chinese parts. Don't want to break the news, but it, it's put together here in America. But don't worry, you can't get coronavirus from it. Allegedly. It's been washed. <laughs> <laughs> but I, when, I, when I have bought Harley accessories, they are not the quality that you are paying for. No. No. Not Whereas at all. if we go and get, you know, was it Brass Balls Choppers? They sell actually pretty reasonably priced, but somewhat higher priced, but it's high quality. You go to Arlen Ness, you're getting a high quality part. And they also have better return policies. Yeah. I've if, never if had a bad part Har- from Arlen Ness. Did Har- does Harley have a return policy? Yeah, it's, you can't return it. That's their policy. Okay, that's what I thought. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But I mean, even if shit's fucked up, you don't, you can't hardly fucking take it back. Yeah, I just think that at some point, and I, th- I think Justin has said it on the show before, but you vote with your dollar. Oh, absolutely. So if people stop buying the overpriced, under quality parts from Harley, they're going to do one of two things. 
one, up the quality, which we know that's not going to happen, and two, lower the price, which they could do. Yeah. Because they are mass producing these overseas and the profit margin on these have to be massive. Oh. Oh, for sure. One hundred percent. They're probably like ninety five percent, but <laughs> <laughs> ah, uh, profit joke. Yeah, <laughs> See what you did there. Thank, nice. you. Thank you. So, so what do you what what are y'all's thoughts about this? I mean, I mean, I'm going to have to echo everything you just said. For yeah. example, I was in there the other day in the dealership the other day, and a guy walks in. He he was looking at at the lights that they have, the little engine kit, and he was asking like how much they were. It was two hundred dollars for the lights. It was another I think one fifty or two hundred for the controller, and then it was three hours of labor to put them on. Wow. I was like, dude, are you serious? You're, and, and the dude's like, yeah, let's do it. I'm like, what? I mean, there's certain things that I won't touch, but fuck. LED lights, man. LED it, lights. It's, it's double-sided tape. It's double-sided and tape and a screw. <laughs> Can maybe, yeah. <laughs> to put it on the battery. It's a screw. Yeah. <laughs> wow. And have you seen their pod They're lights? garbage. They're terrible. <laughs> They're Kiriakin lizard lights. Dude, I was telling Ken. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's really what they exactly look like. It was so funny. When we were at Lone Star, we did quite a bit of riding at night. And I told Ken, I was like, it's so hilarious. I never really noticed it. Like, I knew Zero 3D stuff was good. That's why I tell people it's worth the cost because you're getting the best on the market. But it was at Lone Star we really saw, like, you can see, like, a Zero kit. Oh, a mile down the road, and you can tell oh, it's yeah. a zero kit, and then the you can tell the ones colors. that are not zero kits, yeah. <laughs> like so, like the neons that David wants. Oh Jesus, is he really putting neons? I don't know. <laughs> he st- he still calls them neons. <laughs> so, just to whet the appetite of our viewers slash listeners. Uncle Ken and I have a Shock and Awe 2.0 kit that we are going to be installing on both of our bikes. I know. I can't wait. I've got one on, going on with that, Bob, as well. But nice. It's cool. You can leave me out. It's fine. Don't get fucking loud. <laughs> <laughs> you're the big YouTuber here. We're scraping by just yeah, riding your I'm coattails. I'm just saying. You, you're putting on the same parts I am. I know. But, and I, yeah, riding I your a, coattails. <laughs> see? Yeah. I have a couple of videos I can go and reference now. Yeah. <laughs> But uh, but yeah, we uh, we're looking at partnering up with Zero 3D and having them become a sponsor of the show. But we have to test out their products first. We're not going to take Justin's word on this. No, we, yeah. we have to test gonna it out ourselves. Going to see if they're garbage or not. Yeah, it's not like y'all have seen them in person or anything and complimented no. how good they look at every single ride we go on. But it's fine. Hey, fuck you, buddy. <laughs> Remember the boys? It the needs to be on <laughs> our bike so we can tell from our. I yeah. need to put their tail lights on so. Oh, the people behind me can tell me how good they look. <laughs> <laughs> so that is coming. We are going to do a install video uh, because we have to. And then we're actually going to do a full review and talk about it. It's I, got, they've got to be better than, I mean, the, what was it, the Op 7? That was, oh, that yeah. was Op 7. That was them. Op 7, you get exactly what you pay for. I mean, I'll say that as far as value to dollar. For 40 bucks, I mean. <laughs> Exactly. Value to dollar, I think they're right there with zero. I mean, but if, my, if compar- my controller hadn't quit, I would probably would have left them I'm on saying. my bike. Yeah, you pay more, you get more. Yeah. I mean, and w- I think that really rings true when it comes to LEDs. Oh, well, yeah. I mean, look, I paid 40 really? bucks for the Op 7 ones. The controller went out, and I was like, fuck it, you know, and I just ripped them all off. Yeah. I mean, I could have went through the hassle of trying – to get Opt 7 to send me another controller. But Good I just, luck. But exactly. It's, you <laughs> I know, had them it's, on my Sportster. I had to replace it three times. I mean, it's a foreign company, <laughs> and you're not talking to somebody in the States. No. And it's all through email. And, yeah. You know, whereas, you know, with Zero 3D, yeah. I could they're, call them, yeah, and someone is going to answer the phone. Yep. Exactly. Yeah. Based and in Wisconsin. They might have a slight accent. How you doing there, bud? Yeah, hey there. Hey there. Hey there, order. Oh, you had some problems with your lights there, I see. Well, no that's problem. We'll get you taken right care of. <laughs> that's pretty accurate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, uh, but yeah, so expect to see that. Now, I do want to put a little teaser out there. Uh, if y'all watch Bike and Bird's channel, you saw him do his Harley Davidson footwear review or kind of talking about, you know, getting his, his new riding shoes. 
We also mentioned in there that he got a set for Uncle Ken and myself. So yep. I'm gonna be I've I've did decide to put together a video for this one, but go over a little bit of uh, some highlights. Um, so I tested out the Harley Davidson Bateman, uh, which is a waterproof riding shoe. And I must admit, I've not had great experiences with riding shoes. I've owned two pairs of the Speed and Strength, Speed and Strength Black Nine Moto shoes, both of which were super comfy for all day wear. Like if I'd walk into work and be fine. Uh, they do have some armor in them, but the sole is complete garbage on the streets, which is the one place that you cannot have a bad sole. So here's those highlights of what will be coming in our review video the shoes are heavy heavier than my full height leather boots and now my leather boots think western style boots they're heavier than those and those are armored hmm. these are not armored yeah y'all's were not armored um they are comfortable for short walking like think going into a store, like a convenience store or something, grabbing something or walking into a restaurant, but not so comfortable that I could walk around a rally all day. And finally, for the little teaser here, the soul is complete shit. <laughs> I mean... It's pretty slippery. My God. It's very slippery. See, and it, I didn't notice. See, Maybe. it's funny because like all three of us are on different points here yeah it's like mine were a little bit heavier than my other shoes but they had a lot more armor in them and i could wear them around walking all day i wore them to i think i wore them to ims but well, i wore, wore them to i wore mine to lone star yeah i wore mine to lone star and then of course they're they're lighter than my boots but i also wear steel toe boots yeah. and yeah. whatnot but i will agree that the sole was i wouldn't say complete shit but it definitely needed improvement I, I didn't notice and maybe i just stopped in all the right spots and yeah but yeah, so when Brad was getting his tattoo, I, I had him on, and I went and rode up there because I was like, I need to break him in and scuff up the shit out of the sole so I can give a fair review. And I purposely would drag my feet on the ground trying to rough them up, and even that did nothing. Yeah, they stayed slippery. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> super slippery. So I will be putting out a full review in the near future, so... Uh, be sure you are subscribed to the Between Two Wheels YouTube channel. Uh, we are going to be doing more non-podcast videos on the channel. So head over there, subscribe if you haven't, click the little bell icon so you are notified whenever we upload. Because as you guys know right now, we upload every Wednesday. So that's when the podcast goes live, that's when the video goes live. So we are trying to add more content for you all. Now, the closing argument which I did not write up here because I did not want y'all having a preview, which you probably wouldn't have even read anyways, but... Yeah, that's about right. I usually don't read the closing. No? No. Well, that's good. It's a surprise then. Of the new fucking quotes, <laughs> mid-year release, with the three new paint jobs, which one is your favorite? Paint job. Just paint job? Yeah, not the bikes, but the paint job. So we're we're including the the Fat Boy. Fat Boy and the two rogue glides. Uh, two rogue glides. Oh, for me the the C V O, that sand dune. Yeah. I I like I like that better than yellow or gold or green or whatever color the other one is. Gold. And black is black. Or urine. Two day old urine. Yeah. Humvee piss bottle urine. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the sand dune, it looks really good. Okay. I know I bitched about the most, but I'm gonna have to go with the fat boy. Just because I feel like that would give me the best slate for a custom bike. With the CVOs, I feel like it's it's too complete of a bike. Same reason why I didn't buy a, a Street Glide Special and put a tour pack on it. I instead bought the Ultra and did all the stuff myself. That way I could. It's different. Mm -hmm. And I feel like the Fat Boy is a better platform for a build. Fair enough. If, now, you're, if you're a bot not built kind of guy, obviously the CVO. Sure. Yeah. But to that point, all the work you did on your road glide, on the bow donkey. Mm -hmm. Would you keep the four point docking harness on there or would you go back to a solid mount? I'd go back to a solid mount. Do you still have your solid? I do. Okay. Yeah. It just, it's not red. We can fix that. I know, but that's three, a whole, $3. It's a whole process. Some Krylon. 
<laughs> so for me, shocker, I'm actually going to go with the fat boy. I, To your point, it's it's kind of a perfect starting point. Yeah. And Harley clearly only went 90% when they were completing that bike. Mm-hmm. But yeah, but you know, and we're gonna probably touch on this a little bit in another episode. Yeah, next week's episode from this one. I actually kind of want a soft tail just to play with. They're yeah. really fun. <laughs> I I'm I'm really getting excited for my fat bob to be done. Yeah, yeah. We've been waiting on a part from me for a while. No, that that hasn't been holding up anything. No, it's, it's that extractor broken off in my rear wheel that's been holding up a lot of things. Oh, it's still there. Oh yeah. Oh fucking a. Yeah. That sucks. So, just yeah. burn the whole thing down. Just <laughs> scrap the whole project. I gave it. Uh, Dave came over to talk to me. Just nothing bike related, but uh, he saw I still hadn't gotten it out. He goes, "You want me to take it to work? I'll I'll mess with it." I'm like, "Bro, if you want to <laughs> go for it, because it's it's." You broke it at the bottom, right? I broke it in the entire thread. Event, the extractor bolt is at the very bottom, though. The extractor bit, I should say, is at the very <sighs> bottom. But that what just, worries me that is hurts my soul. <laughs> I gave it to him on Wednesday, and he told me yesterday evening to call him, and I haven't called him yet. So I don't know. He texts me everything else, but he won't tell me anything about the wheel. Maybe I maybe he took him. a torch to it. You know, I had to heat it up to get it out. <laughs> I'd much rather have it recoded than have to buy a new wheel and have it recoded. Because uh. <laughs> if he heated up and fucked the powder coat, then he can take the wheel off because that was the only cost outside of the powder coat was putting the wheel on. Uh. So I could just take it to Robert and be like, sorry, bro, got to gotta recode it. Strip it and recode it. Yep. Yeah. Fuck it. Damn. <laughs> that hurts my soul. <laughs> but, yeah, I've I've been – Toying with the idea of going with a soft tail and something that both Tracy and I could have fun on. So what would it be? Find out next week. Ah. <laughs> Thank you for tuning in to Between Two Wheels podcast to see the show notes for this and all of our episodes, to find links to our social media and Patreon page where we are raising money for Project Clean Slate, head over to our website at www.betweentwowheels.com the two is spelled out T-W-O on behalf of Justin Uncle Ken I am Johnny Roblox saying be yourself unless you're a jerk then be someone better peace uh, uh, uh.